thank you everybody for joining us today um, and to our guests it's uh, delighted to have you as part of the Fem Foundry um, talks and platform um, I'm going to hand over to Nancy and Eileen um, who are co-founders of Cucumber um, who are a partner that we work with um, on a consistent basis and we're delighted to have them here today to educate us on this uh, fascinating topic so I will hand over to you guys and I'm going to um, mute and uh, get rid of my lovely face as well for you all so uh, over to you guys. Thank you so much Amy and thank you everyone everyone for joining us tonight and anyone who might be joining later on on Catch Up. Um, we're really delighted to be here. Um, I'm Eileen from uh, co-founder at Cucumber Clothing and we're really here tonight to say what on earth is circular fashion? You know, what does circular fashion actually mean and how can we help to achieve it? Hi and I'm Nancy, the other co-founder and uh, we're delighted to be joined by two uh, great uh, panelists. So first up, we have uh, Viola Jardin, and Viola is an Accelerator Program Manager at Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership, which supports startups and entrepreneurs to address innovation and sustainability across a wide variety of sectors. So welcome, Viola. Thank and we you. also have Ilona, who is the co-owner of Six and Sons, and a social ecopreneur whose mission is people, planet, and prosperity. Uh, Six and Sons is a concept store in Amsterdam and a physical platform focused on conscious, sustainable brands and entrepreneurs. It's all upcycled, recycled, reused, and quality products to change how people shop. And we're delighted that she stocks us as well. So welcome, Ilona. Thank you. Exactly. Um, well, to kick off, I think, probably the best place to start is to try and define what does circularity in fashion mean? And Viola, um, I'd like to start with you because your job means that you are at the intersection of a huge network of all sorts of different people who are trying to achieve both circularity and sustainability. And we can maybe discuss the difference between those two words. They seem to be used interchangeably these days. Um, and I think people really, I certainly, if you asked me a year ago, I would have struggled to say what the difference was between those two. Um, so yeah, I think it would be interesting if you could kick off and, and tell us maybe your overview of, of what you feel circularity really means in the context of fashion. Thank you, Eileen. Um, I think at the moment, the whole fashion industry is looking into security and there are many different interpretations what it means. And I think security in fashion is very much developed based on the concept of a circular economy. And according to Ellen MacArthur Foundation, the circular economy refers to kind of an industry economy and that is a restrictive by intention aims to rely on renewable energies, minimize tracks and eliminate the use of toxic chemicals and kind of it's a quite a complex um, you know, series and approach. And then so circular fashion here, I think can kind of be defined as fashion items, you know, such as clothing, shoes, or accessories, and they are designed and sourced and produced and provide with the intention to be used again, and then circulate uh, responsibly and effectively in the society. So for as long as possible in their uh, most valuable form. And so like, and after that, I kind of return to the biosphere when no longer uh, of a human use. So that's kind of, the, I think, the definition of uh, this circular fashion. And in my personal humble view, <laughs> I think um, circular fashion is a big concept as a whole. And it requires not only kind of brands and designers to try to, you know, use the sustainable materials, recycle the materials, organic materials. It also involves consumers as their shopping behaviors, and how they treat their clothing. All, every stakeholders in the, this value chain, I think, plays a role in the security. And it also actually also requires, in my, in my view, also requires you know, government's involvement as um, we need the infrastructure in place. So if we want to ensure security actually works to the maxima, then all these parts kind of have to gel together. And also, well, I think, as you mentioned, uh, working in an accelerator, that I certainly think um, innovations plays a role also in pushing kind of boundaries in the fashion industry, especially in the security area. 
mean, absolutely. We when we were on the accelerator program, I think we were amazed about some of the, uh, you know, really thinking outside the box, particularly a lot of small brands. Um, and that was really interesting to see how different people approach the same massive topic, like you say. Um, and Alona, um, how about you? Um, how would you expand? I mean, this at the moment, it's the first time in the UK that it's been Sustainable Fashion Week. And in the last few days, both ASOS and uh, Primark have published their views on what sustainability means to them over the coming years, um, obviously as very large companies. But as an ecopreneur and conscious store owner, what is your take um, on, you know, what's the process behind your buying criteria? How do you select different brands? Um, it, originally, it was just to look at sustainability. It wasn't circular, but now we are really looking at circular, which I think, again, is a very large term because to be circular means that you're really going back, you know, cradle to cradle, and that's, that's a big ask. Um, I think uh, in our industry... Um, we need to practice and practice and uh, we're all learning. We're at stages of, we're just developing an understanding about what is this actual term? What does it actually mean to be circular or even sustainability? What does it actually mean? And since we're at, we're all at sort of at this kind of stage of learning, I think um, from our point of view, from Six and Sons, uh, we are looking at pillars. We're looking at, you know, what makes up a, a circular or, you know, sustainable brand, you know, do they look at ethics, you know, are they looking at use, uh, reusable materials if they're not um, natural fibres, for example, can they be reused in a different way? Uh, it's also interesting to look at tradition, you know, we're, we're talking about high tech, which is good, I think it's important to have fashion tech, high tech, but it's also really important to go back to you know, original ways of doing things. And, you know, let's say many thousands of years ago, we don't really have that footprint. Um, you know, they didn't have that footprint, but we do. So we have to sort of go back to finding out how to actually do that. And when we select these type of brands, we're just looking at their mission. You know, they, they could be going into the phase of circularity like asos and larger brands i mean everybody knows that they will never they were never circular they were never sustainable they're going into that approach i don't know whether that is let's say a marketing opportunity for them or whether they realize that they don't have any other option because sustainability is going to be part of what they do but i think for the sme smes it's it's just you have to become sustainable if you want to go to the next level or continue to be profitable. Because I think as a, as a customer, as a retailer, it's like a responsibility that we need to protect our planet. And we can only do that, as Viola said, in a way as a community, if all of us think that way, the criteria is just about how can I keep the maximum value of this garment? So that's that's kind of like in a nutshell um just make sure that you buy quality and that it can be reused recycled as as uh and nancy you know presented me you know we were looking at all the ways of uh, looking at products to be reused i mean i, I think that's 80 sorry i was gonna say 84 percent of clothing ends up in landfill or incinerator so yeah exactly yeah. So I think I think that's some really interesting ideas from both of you. Um, I think one of the things, you know, Viola, you started off and it's quite right that if you want to look at circularity as a whole, if you look at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, you get that you get this feeling that there's this huge kind of arc of, of, of what it actually means. But it's it's incredibly complex and, and, and complicated. And I think that as Ilana said, you have to bring it down to individual actions because other than that, it's that thing everybody thinks, oh, it's just too difficult and it's too hard. Whatever I do isn't gonna make a difference. But actually the reality is, is every single choice that we make, whatever we do when we're consuming, will we'll make that difference. And thinking back to, as you say, going back to the old days, you know, in the 18th century, women would make a dress for themselves. And over 10 years, they'd sew on a new collar, they'd shorten it, they'd add a flounce, they'd put some, you know, they would keep that same because it was expensive and it was difficult to make a dress. And 
And why would you rip the whole thing up and throw it away? It's only now that as prices have come down for consumers, people do have that option. Seven pounds for a dress, well, quite frankly, I'm just gonna buy you one every single day this week because I've got things to go to. So it has to be about changing, I think, the mindset of consumers. It, as you said, Viola, it has to be every step of the way, all the way from the person creating the raw materials to the person at the very end buying it and deciding what to do with it. Um, and actually, in terms of statistics, the other thing that we were reading about the other day from an organization called RAP.org, it's a really interesting paper about how you can make best use of things. And 30% of the, of the emissions from a product can be reduced by just increasing the longevity of, a, of the use of that garment. So it's not just about making sure that it's made of the right things in the right place by the right people. It's about using it for a long time and then maybe letting someone else use it and then someone else use it and then finally cutting it up and making it into something else for someone else to use so um, and maybe that actually brings us on to our point of view Nazi as manufacturers yes I mean uh, you mean looking at our raw materials and things I mean I would say that for us you know, we're a small business um, and specifically uh, like Ilona was saying about small brands you know we have the flexibility and the agility to uh, move around a little bit. Um, so we have introduced uh, two different, uh, we have our loan to own, which is basically a try before you buy. And we have our pre-loved um, and they're just small ways, you know, Eileen was saying we all have to do our little bit. Uh, and they're just small ways that people can, um, you know, try things and then you can send them back. And we, can, we will take care of recycling, reusing, repurposing, because I think also people get frightened if they buy something and, oh my God, what am I going to do with that? How do I actually, you know, if I have this responsibility, it, it feels quite a lot of pressure. So I think people need to have a bit of handholding maybe in, in the whole process. Um, but I don't know if Eileen, you want to talk a little bit more about what our materials and how we look at how we do business. I, well, I, I think actually it would be interesting to hear from both Viola, um, from, from the both of you about the whole concept of raw materials. So from our point of view, our products, we do use synthetic fabrics and we've had a lot of pushback on that over time from, the, from day one, from day dot, we've had a huge amount of pushback, possibly most famously for us when we were on Dragon's Den and one of the judges looked at us and said, well, I would never buy your clothes because I only wear natural fabrics, um, you know, Fine, fair enough, totally get that. Having said that, we know, and I'm sure you know, and, and more and more people do know that nowadays, just because you're wearing something cotton doesn't automatic, automatically give you an A star in, in terms of sustain, sustain, sustainability. In fact, it might give you a D minus because if that cotton was grown, goodness only knows where, by goodness only knows what type of labor and each meter of cotton uses multiple liters of water it, it's not you know the whole raw material idea isn't isn't straightforward but actually viola i know that you've seen some very interesting companies working in that area um yes and i think i i certainly do agree um it's not that if it's a natural materials that means sustainable that's actually two different things but it's quite easy, obviously, uh, for brands to say, oh, we use, uh, you know, natural materials and as a, in a way, almost a kind of a greenwashing. But then let's put that aside. I think there, there are, because of my work, um, one thing I really enjoy is that um, the passion shared by the founders who care about sustainability, sustainability deeply and really try to do the maximum they can to push the boundary. So in terms of materials, we do, we do see quite some materials that are kind of emerging into the market. And so basically from kind of creating um, sustainable materials like high biotech, they turn like fish waste into the high quality leather substitute. Wow. I, know, I know people will be like, what? And that was my first reaction when I knew them is like, what? But yes, that's kind of, um, you know, there are a lot of innovation like this and like um, biophilica that actually turn green waste into textile. And now they are actually working um, with uh, luxury watch companies for their stripe. So uh, there are a lot of um, different innovations. They are trying to push boundaries. But then back to um, Nancy and, and Eileen, your point on the material. I, for example, like clothes like a bras, underwears, or outdoor clothing, 
you require, or even sports, you require certain functionalities. And when you require certain functionalities, it's harder. It's harder to, you know, to find, I suppose, to find, you know, from cotton or the, the, that natural material to achieve those, uh, those uh, function that you really need for those clothing. So I think that's an area, there's still a lot of innovations potentially to come. So we are hoping we, are, we, are, we will be able to see um, more from this space. And I, have a, I can talk about innovation all day. <laughs> but. And I think it's a very important point you're saying about when you choose something, because obviously there's no point making something however sustainable it is if nobody's ever gonna wear it or use it. So it has to first and foremost be something that people want. So everything is a balancing act. And I think also it's about um, accepting you can make mistakes because doing anything, you are gonna have pitfalls along the way. And I think for us as a small company, we can pick ourselves up and learn from those much quicker because um, I guess the big companies have got layers of you know, different uh, people to go through. But, um, and I think, I think what's difficult is there's a lot of greenwashing around things because sustainability is a buzzword and, and circularity is becoming a buzzword as well. So I know when we've looked at first looked into um, recycled polyester, we found that there's a lot of recycled polyester that's made from virgin water bottles. There's a whole new opportunity there. So you have to have all your, you know, you have to really know what you're doing and it's not as simple as just the top line. Um, so I don't know if you've found this, Alona, when you're looking at different brands, it's, it's not just how, you know, the top line of, yes, we use organic cotton, which like Eileen says, uses so much water, or yes, we use bamboo, which is a fantastic natural substance, but the chemical process it has to go through to be a lovely soft buttery material that people want to wear, you know, everything has its pluses and minuses. And I think it's about being transparent for uh, consumers so they can make an informed choice on things. Uh what I would say about sustainability and circularity is it's the, the two subjects which are kind of like um, the, the easiest way to explain it is like if you were to study them, you could be studying them for years. I mean, when I first started with Six and Sons and I thought I knew what sustainability meant or circularity meant, um, you're, you're always learning. The whole process is like what you said. Yeah, okay. They, they took um, plastic bottles from the ocean and they recycled them. And you think, wow, that's fantastic. That's such a great innovative idea. But you don't actually realize the resources needed to do that. And what kind of, as you said, what kind of plastic bottles and how do they actually do it and everything else. So, uh, and so to me, it's an ever-changing um, concept of how we're supposed to digest this information and what do we trust you know, so for example, if Dragon's Den um, panelists said, you know, that they would never wear it, I find that interesting because do they wear swimming costumes? Because, <laughs> you know, do they wear, uh, you know, glasses? Do they, I mean, it's joined some... up, isn't it? It's the joined up writing, yeah. Yeah, but you know, I mean, the thing is that it's like a misinformed concept that you just, you hear something, you read something, and therefore it is. It's like this fake news kind of concept because we're so focused on trying to be green that uh, it's almost like it's a little bit hurtful to say that one is right and one is wrong because we don't know what's right. We're just trying, and that's the point, that we're trying and we're doing things. And to be circular, it's something that is attainable over time. You can't do it directly, and it's something that has to be done through different types of businesses, as you mentioned, manufacturer, brand, you know, the seller, uh, end user. There's so many components on how is it actually going to be circular? You know, so. Yeah, so for, can, yeah go ahead. Can I, can I ask you a question about your customers? Do yeah. you think that when come to your shop, the majority of them, with the idea in their head that they are people who have a, a, an interest in, in being a green customer, if I'm going to use that kind of catch-all word, or do they come to you because they know that you have really cool things and also your things are sustainable, or, or is it just a, a real mix? It's a mix, but we're starting because we're, we've been around for a number of years now. People are coming because they know it's a platform for sustainable brands. So, but that's also, you know, the catch word is sustainable brand. So, oh yeah, we know it's sustainable, but then, you know, for example, they read um, one of the labels and it will say polyester or, you know, a combination of, as an example, you know, you, you buy socks 
organic cotton. But guess what? If you buy organic cotton without any kind of elasticity, they're not going to last. Mm. So you have to be aware of, you know, as mentioned, as Eileen, you mentioned yourself, if you want quality, you also have to think about, you know, how, the, how long will it actually last? And we're slowly educating people from our own knowledge, but also constantly. It's, to me, it's kind of like as a retailer, I'm, I'm earning my PhD because I'm constantly learning new things and I'm updating that information and trying to give that back to the customer. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong, depending on what sources you get. But the most important thing is that the brand wants to do something the right way. Mm-hmm. And I would say that longevity really is in that whole circular model because the whole point is something that can last a long time, either in its original format or in a, in a, in a new way. Yeah. Um, so, and, yeah. And, yeah. And do you see, so one of the things I read the other day was an article about Stella McCartney because she, she was doing all of this when it was really uncool, wasn't she? She was banging on about vegan leather and no fur and all of this. And no yeah, you're saying like literally she's crazy. This is a luxury industry. But now she's she was like the trailblazer. Um, and but even so, I read that LMVH are still using silk, which obviously is an animal product, and obviously you have to kill the worms at the end of, because they haven't found a great substitute for it. And at the end of the day, as Nancy said, you have to have products consumers are gonna buy. But Viola, do you find that do you find that why are you being over the last few years, do you find the types of companies you're seeing have changed? Do they have a slightly different mission in mind? Has their thinking moved forward as well? I, I think in the last few years, people started to kind of wake up by sustainability, the impact um, either from the environmental side or the social side. So people do, when I say people, brands, consumers, or all of them, including governments, actually also um, have an intention, you know, really much incentivize businesses that, you know, really leveraging reuse type of the models or recycle or different sort. And business-wise, I, I guess what I can say is we try, when we communicate with businesses, we try to talk about whether they have the system thinking in their business planning or at least in their mindset. Because when you consider about system thinking in the business terms, then you are trying to achieve that ultimate goal, which is the perfect you know, ideal situation, but you know you are not. And I think um, Nancy and Eileen, when you started in the, the program, we did this uh, session um, with, to give you kind of a compass to know where you are right now. And I remember the conversation, it was, it was so much, it was so overwhelmed by all this, so many things that right? you have to care. But then obviously as a different, you know, different business journey at different size, as you go, you try to tackle as, as many as possible as you go. And at a certain point, hopefully this journey will eventually lead up to the point, you know, as, as a founder, you feel we have done everything we can. And that, that is the very uh, important point. I think, um, uh, I don't know, you, you mentioned that as well. You have that goal you want to achieve and do the most you can from here and all the way travel there. And obviously um, in my work, I, um, I have the privilege uh, to see a lot of um, innovations coming out. And I totally agree with you, uh, your point, uh, I don't know, it's not just about the high tech, side of innovation. I do believe in a lot of innovations is also coming from, you know, the behavior change, the mindset change. So there are now also a lot of different kind of business models um, in the market. I think this year um, in April, Harold actually launched a partnership with uh, My Wardrobe HQ, which is a fashion rental company. It, it, was, um, it was a bit of a shock for me because Harold, you know, you were first you know, your presentation about Harrods is such a top tip, we'll see people shopping more, right? But then they start, they also, you know, start to take these type of business models, innovations into considerations to think about potentially, you know, this type of um, rental and things can replace a lot of um, overproduction, can solve some overproduction. Obviously overproduction itself is a problem to, to be solved eventually, but they started to moving towards more circular, 
thinking. And I think that's um, the industry is really moving. If a uh, Harold's thinking about moving into kind of um, you know rental space, that mean that means something. I think. Absolutely, but also at the other end. I mean, in a way. You know, a lot of young people are so keen or talk the talk of circularity and sustainability, but then companies like, um, you know, Pretty Young Thing, Pretty Little Thing and Boohoo, that they're still very popular. Um, so it's kind of joining everything up and, and, uh, and really understanding what it means. And I know that part of ASOS and, um, uh, you know, who, who published their report this week, they're talking a lot about circularity, but it just seems so, and Primark, it just seems so different to their current model. But maybe it's the time when people feel that even if they don't want to, they have to, because that's what the consumer wants. I, I mean, are you finding that, Elona, that people are just demanding things that, that do have, that they can see will last or be reused that, you know, aren't here just for today? I think generally, uh it's kind of like a trend. People are looking at sustainability like something like, oh, you know, I also want to be sustainable, whatever that means, because it's kind of like a cool thing to do. So I'm all for that marketing. The more that we market the sustainability factor, most people don't know what it is. They just want it. Yeah. So about quality and everything else, that's more, I think it depends on the target. Like you mentioned, certain target audiences are still going to go for price because they've got a budget and they're looking at the budget and it's kind of regardless. And it's the same thing in the home, you know, they're, they're going to buy products that are focused on price rather than is it actually good for the environment. So I think by creating that feeling of, um, I wouldn't say fear. No, I, I should say fear because just like COVID, you know, you bring the fear into someone and then they do something about it. If we bring enough fear into people like, hello, if you don't do something now, this is the response. It's like a responsibility as a customer. I have to buy sustainability. And I like that trend because that's the only way that we're going to convert people who are non-believers into something of, okay, we have to do something because look, we see that there's huge problems. And the more advertising or promotion or marketing that we see about, like you mentioned, you know, um, clothes being burnt or you know that, that people physically can see the damage that's being caused that's the only way they're going to say okay okay enough is enough I didn't know I was doing it and now yeah. I need to do something about it. In a it. way you're saying it doesn't really matter the reason as long as they do it as long as those are the brands that are surviving. Yeah but I think yeah. you kind of need to show them what would happen or mm -hmm. you need to you know create some kind of understanding of if you don't do this, this is the outcome. You have to understand that this is not going to turn out well. Can I just interject here and say that we've we've now, as, as our talk has progressed, we've gone back to using the words sustainability and circularity interchangeably. And I think that is actually the crux of this conversation, isn't it? Is that so many of these words have, you know, green, sustainable, circular, and, and so there's some, so, Going back to the first definition, can we say, can we all agree that sustainability is the overarching umbrella to, to what everyone is talking about? And so, yeah, and circularity is a key component of that. So it's part of the sustainability story. Does that make sense or does somebody disagree? I, I, I personally, I think that there's not going to be a lot of circular companies because it's very difficult to attain. I, I use the old term, which is cradle to cradle. Um, and for me, you know, that kind of concept of you're creating it and then it goes back into, you know, the evolution or revolution or the change of that garment or product. Um, but that's such, that's kind of like, you know, if you're talking yeah. about, you know, even even you know certification that's like the prime of certification that you can get to be circular and i think that's we all have to have goals and we have to be or try to be those kind of companies yeah well that actually leads us nancy and i on pretty well to to wanting to ask well all of us i think all of us we all need to come up with some great takeaways for people because it's great talking about it, trying to define it, trying to understand what consumers want and what manufacturers are trying to do and what retailers are doing and what people like Viola are doing. But what can 
that every woman, every man in the street do? What, 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 is, what are one or two things that, that you think, that we all think that they could do? I'm kind of throwing it out there to anyone who wants to take it. Do you want me to answer? I'll answer from a customer's point of view. Since we're all customers, we are all customers. We're all consumers. Yeah, consumers, exactly. So as a consumer, I know from my wardrobe that whatever the quality products that I have, I can reuse them, I can recycle them, I can give them away, I can do whatever, but they're there and they're not damaged. And even if they're damaged, I can just, you know, talk about changing it slightly, but still keeping a really good garment. So for me, as a consumer, as someone who, you know, has been buying clothes, you know, for so many years, you just need to make sure it's quality. That's really important. So that whatever you want to do with it, you can. That it's not to a point where, okay, I have to get rid of it because it serves no function. So do you think in a way we're redefining what new means? So new could be, does new mean brand spanking new or does new mean new to me? You know, I could take something from you and then it's new. So maybe yeah. that's yeah. the crux of it. We're, we're trying to say it doesn't have to be everything, every new component as part of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you think about, if you, sorry, if you think about fashion, what is fashion? It's about trends, but it's also about style. So if you're picking something out from something, you know, from 20, 30 years ago, it's going to be fashionable but you just need to be able to get it. And, yeah. you know, whether it's vintage or not, it doesn't matter. It's interchangeable. Yeah. And on that point, on a very personal note, I was practically in tears the other day because I realized that I'd given away all my Vivian Westwood bus days from the 1980s saying, oh, I'll never wear these again. No, I gave them to my niece. No, they're not for me anymore. And now I'm like, why? Because they're in <laughs> perfect condition. They will last another 30 years or 40 years. Fine. I might not be wearing them in 30 years, but I wouldn't mind again now I don't know what so to the to that point about quality absolutely that those are things I bought 30 years ago and I thought they were great and I still think they're great now and I happily wear them now even though I can't and in another 30 years somebody else will be happily wearing them still if they're well taken care of um Viola do you have any take good great takeaway points for us um, actually, on that one, I just want to add my own experience as well. I have, I do, I do also um, own a jumper. Uh, it was a Japanese-made jumper. My mom wore twenty years and passed it to me, and I already wore another another ten years. Still perfect, new, and I think I can carry on wearing it and love the the longevity. That's how it means. And so that's on that. And in terms of, I think, takeaway sides, I think there are two, two things um, quite important to remember, I suppose, is that one, this is a journey. So obviously, um, sometimes it can feel really, you know, as a consumer or as a brand or, you know, as an educator, it could feel like, oh, there's just so much to look at. And it's, it's, it's sometimes overwhelmed you a lot, but Still, it's a journey. So we are doing the best we can each step at a time. And the other point is, um, so I think back to my earlier point, um, everyone has a role to play. So I think um, as a consumer, don't underestimate your power in pushing you know, sustainability. And you can do it um, really by asking more questions every time when you want to purchase something. Ask questions to yourself if you need um, some, it needs something new and just think about Patagonia's statement. Do you need it? And if your answer, the question to yourself, the answer is yes, then do you need it new? And you know, if you say actually not really, then up for a second hand one. And if you have very strong, like I really need it new, okay, that's fine. Then maybe just choose something that you can you know, use for multiple occasions, you can use for a longer period of time, to maximize the, the garment's uh, lifespan. And I think there's another thing, um, also ask questions, you know, ask questions when you are buying clothes, ask about brands, ask about um, what, what are the, are the garments coming from, how it's made. And then obviously challenging, I think challenging brands, uh, green credentials, the more you challenge brands and brands will try their best maybe they don't necessarily like you know that's their mission or anything but because you challenge them as a consumer they will start to work on it and you know ask numbers or check facts and really stick with brands you know with purpose and that 
even if these brands, you know, like a cucumber closing, I'm not perfect at the moment, but they were trying their best to do better at every step of time. You know, you kind of, this is a journey as a consumer, you can, you can grow with the brands together. So that would be probably my take. Yeah, I mean, I think Patagonia is a real trailblazer here. I mean, with their, I think they've got a list of 10 and they're all so relevant. Um, great. Um, is there any, I, I think, you know, we've kind of discovered that it's a very complicated subject. It's not a simple, there's no simple answer. Um, and just the best you can do is try your best, whether you're a brand or whether you're a consumer and always ask questions and be inquisitive and just know what you're doing really, make informed choices. Um, and if it's not obvious, then like um, Viola says, just keep asking questions and brands will, I mean, certainly we reply to questions we have and I'm sure most brands do. Um, so Amy, do you want to, do you want yeah, to open up the floor? Some questions in the chat. If you can see the chat box, there's um, a couple in there to um, everyone. Uh, so the first one is considering it's such a buzzword at the moment, how can we make sure that a brand really is sustainable as opposed to just jumping on the bandwagon, which is a great question. Um, and I'll do that as a two part. And apart from buying sustainability, sustainably, what can we do as consumers to contribute, which you've, you've, you've sort of answered there. Um, I'll throw that one out to, to the floor and then we can go on to the next one. Anyone want to answer that? Want to start. About okay. which one? Apart from buying sustainability, that one? Um, well, there's, there's, there's one which the first one is considering it's such a buzzword at the moment, how can we make sure that brand really is sustainable? So I think that's a very good question. What, what you know, how, how do the sort of, as you say, we're all consumers and yeah. most people don't have, a, you know, a large knowledge of this. I think a lot of brands, you know, stamp the sustainable um, flag on, but how do we actually know what it is we're buying and how can we be more um, responsible? in that sphere? I'll answer from my, my point of view. Um, as a retailer, I feel obliged and also it's about the trust of me as a retailer and therefore when we're choosing or curating the store, we're doing our due diligence by looking at the credentials of the company. Of course, you don't know 100%, but you're looking at all of the things that they've done. Of course, certification is important, but it's very expensive in many areas, especially for smaller companies. But mm -hmm. When they are providing the information, we're, we're asking them and pushing them to give us all the information about manufacturing, where it's done, is it done locally. Try to buy local is the first point about sustainability. As much as you possibly can, try to buy local. Because first, you're, you're helping your economy. And secondly, you're, you know that if it's done locally, that there's a number of things that are already ticked off, which are like the fact that they're ethically made or that the CO2 emissions are much lower than if they were made somewhere else. That's first point. Second point, if you can't do that, or you really like a garment and you really want to know, is it sustainable? When you're buying from a retailer that is looking only at sustainable brands, you know, as, as the retailer, I would be very, um, I would be placing myself in jeopardy in terms of my name if it wasn't the case. So we, we're doing as much as we can to do the research for the customer before it gets there. So if you're going to buy it online, make sure it is a portal or a platform that focuses on sustainability. So that's right. more important. I think they're, they're very good points, especially the buying local as well, because that's something that everybody can do. Um, and then apart from buying sustainably, what can we do as consumers to contribute, which you, you have sort of answered. Um, but does anyone want to add anything to that question? If not, I can go on to the next one. I mean, the only thing I'd say is, is, is just really to reiterate, which is that everyone does have a role to play. So not to forget that every single person is important every time you make that decision. You're making, you're making a decision about what you're consuming and that goes all the way back to that raw material wherever it was first sourced. So yeah, try and make every decision a conscious decision when you're buying. Okay, great. Um, and then a uh, final question, which I thought is also a good one, especially for our audience. Um, and you, ha you did sort of touch upon this as well. Um, a lot of sustainable fashion can be quite expensive. Um, so what can be done to make it more affordable? Um, and do you think this is something that will come naturally as more brands embrace it? I mean, I would just say from our point of view as a small company, it's something we come up a lot. 
uh, and the thing is you have to remember that nothing's sustainable if you're not supporting um, fair working practices and a good living wage. Um, so when companies like Primark say that they're going to incorporate sustainability, but they're not going to increase their price, I don't know how they do that. I mean, obviously they have huge buying power, but even so, you know, for us, it's very important to pay a living wage. And people love the fact, when we explain to them, they love the fact that, you know, we do all of that, but it does add on to the, to the end price. And I think you need to look at a product like um, Viola and Ilana have been saying that it's not just about this costs X, it's how, how much wear am I gonna get out of it? If I'm gonna keep it in my wardrobe for, you know, 20, 30 years and then pass it on or whatever, then it's worth it, cost per wear. You, you know, it, you need to think about more than just something for a particular occasion. I think that's how we found it as a brand. I don't know if either of you two have more to add on that or what you would say about the brands you've come across and the, the prices they charge. Um, from my understanding, you have to be obviously profitable, but you also need to make, if, you, if you're using tech, for example, and you're, you're, you're creating something that has a, a value to it, you're doing all the, you know, the R&D to make sure that it, it works. If you're a small company, it's, it's harder to do that. But at the same time, as a consumer, I'm going to look for certain things. If you're looking for basics, it's, you're probably going to look for something a, a bit cheaper. But if it's something a little bit extraordinary or unique, it's, it has to have a value to it. And that's the bottom line, that fashion shouldn't be throwaway. It should have a value to it. And the question to the customer is, what is that value? So Absolutely. they just need to reevaluate because, you know, it's kind of like buying a burger and buying a steak. I mean, yeah, it, they're different prices, but you get what you pay for. Absolutely. So that's the kind of the bottom line. Yeah. yeah. And uh, can I just add one last thing to that, which is I think that a lot of the price change in terms of sustainable products, not just in fashion, but in, in every sector, will be top down. So it will be partly government directed. And it will be partly larger corporations which do have the power to do it because they have the budget to do it. Um, you know, someone like B&Q, they are really investing heavily in trying to only provide sustainable brands. Not, I have no shares in B&Q, but they are doing this. And they are not passing the price on to their consumers because they are large enough to be able to do that. It's a very different story for small brands because they have to carry this huge cost, which proportionately is much larger than for somebody like B&Q. So it has to be both ends with the consumer in the middle, making those conscious choices about wanting to support sustainable businesses. And the more consumers do that, the the quicker prices will come down and become the norm. So it's a, a, that is a, that is a circle. That is the way, you know, you have to, Think of it like that. Yeah, I think there's some uh, brilliant takeaways from, from all of that. We've been furiously writing notes for the replay as well, which we'll, we'll pull out. So um, thank you very much, everyone. I think that was um, certainly very educational from, from my standpoint, and um, I'm sure everyone else will think so too. Um, Nancy, I think your um, I think it was your stat in the beginning of, um, or was it Eileen? Sorry, I forget. 80% um, uh, of clothes will become landfill. 80%, yeah. Landfill or incinerated. It's shocking, isn't it? Absolutely shocking. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we all have a, a part to play. So, um, again, thank you very much, everyone, um, for, for joining us this evening. Um, and Nancy and Eileen, as always, for, for educating us as well.